And now, the news. Hey, welcome to Make Music Income Live. We're going to talk about several things that have happened this week that I just think are pretty interesting. Um, some, some things that I think that uh, just really shocked me a little bit. And, and I always love shocking developments uh, on, on what's going on with music income. Um, so we're going to be talking today about um, Crucial Music has had some interesting changes. I want to talk about that because I actually really like this library. And number two, um, uh, I want to talk about some experiments uh, that I've been doing on different kinds of libraries. I want to talk about Taxi a little bit. I want to talk about Sync. I want to talk about Sheet Music. I have a great publishing video coming out I want to talk about. But the biggest news is that Hello Composers, my composing channel that I've been working on for a long time, it's coming back. And it will be back on Tuesday live. won't be on this channel. It'll be on the Hello Composers channel. So you need to make sure that you go to hellocomposers.com. That'll take you right to the YouTube uh, site for Hello Composers and let you subscribe there and be on that list for um, for what's going to happen with Hello Composers. I'm really excited to bring this channel back, probably be doing a Tuesday live for now every week where I am talking about a specific uh, composition and eventually listening to your compositions as well. Uh, totally free, just as part of the, the channel, just to talk about composition. We won't be talking about anything like um, any kind of income. We won't be talking about any kind of uh, uh, anything else really. We'll be talking really only about composition, about writing, about music theory, about uh, chords and melodies and all that kind of stuff. We won't even be talking about production. We're going to be talking about composition. This is what I did my master's in. So I'm really excited to get back to this. So make sure you go to hellocomposers.com, which will lead you to the YouTube site. Make sure you subscribe and be ready for Tuesday's first episode also at this time, 11 a.m. I think is the best time to do these lives. And so it'll be at 11 a.m. on the Hello Composer site. I hope that you will be there for this first kind of re, re I, I can't remember what the, the actual episode is called. I think it's called uh, Back to C or Back to the Beginning, starting on C or something like that. But yes, we will all be back. Um, even um, my friend uh, Ludwig and uh, little, little B little Beethoven, and we'll be doing that full thing. So make sure you're here for Hello Composer. So that's thing one uh, of the news I want to talk about. I'm, I'm really excited about that. That'll be Tuesday, September 13th at 11 a.m. on the Hello Composer's channel. I hope you will make it for that. Arco says he wants to talk about identify. Well, we can make identify part of this. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about content ID. That's a, a, one of the things that's on my list, and we will get to that. Uh, certainly. So, uh, yeah, the, this is what the composer kids and our friend, uh, Mr. Anthony Clint Jr. call dope. We are dope, yo. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, this is the dope, the news for the dope composers uh, of the day. So today we're going to, uh, get into a couple things. And first in the news today, crucial music, which is a, non-exclusive music library that I really like a lot, actually. Um, I think they are uh, one of my favorite libraries to kind of work with. They are a, a music library that um, you can only send them three songs at a time, uh, and it takes a while to get um, to hear back from them, sometimes up to two months to hear back if they accepted those songs or not. I've got about five songs in there. Um, but they started something new this past week, and they and that is that they started taking um, cover songs. You can do arrangements of cover songs, and you can upload them to um, Crucial Music. Now, they have a very cool different way of, of organizing the different submissions to them now. They have, uh, I can't show you on, I uh, can't screen share, but if you go to crucialmusic.com, you'll see that for the composers, they have three squares. And on those three squares, they have upload a song, um, upload a public domain cover, or upload 
your own cover of a of another song, which is a non-public domain song, like a song done in the past that's come out in the past 60 or 70 years. So you could do any song. I uploaded a, a couple of covers that I had done from different uh, brands that I've done. And they are looking specifically, they say, for uh, new versions, new unique uh, reimaginings, I think is what they called it. So Crucial Music is uh, is doing that. And that is definitely something that you will want to look into crucialmusic.com because I, I think they're a great non-exclusive library. I love that they're non-exclusive, so I can continue to put those songs in Motion Array. I can put those songs in Pond5 or any other non-exclusive library I want I want to put them in. So that's pretty cool. And I would suggest you check out that library. And if you're not already submitting to them, I will tell you that their bar is really high. It's it's really high because they uh they consider themselves a TV and film library so they are going to be trying to uh, get stuff to tv and film and um so that's going to require pretty high quality stuff don't don't send them corporate music uh, believe me that doesn't work um however i've had all sorts of stuff kind of published there everything from classical to jazz to folk to um to christmas music uh so quite a few different things that they've taken but I will tell you, you have to be really, really careful with your quality there. And I, I don't think corporate music is a thing that they're going to be looking for because they're not looking. Crucial Music does not put music up on these sites. Uh, uh, like they're not putting stuff up for people to uh, to put onto YouTube and things like that. Arco says, did you or anyone in the chat get a placement from Crucial Music? Yes, I've had five placements. Uh, oh, no, placements. Um, no, but they do have a cool thing. Uh, or at least I don't know if I have a placement with them, but they have a cool thing where they show you the pitches that they have done, which is really neat, where they show you how many, uh, what 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 they have pitched of your music and to what opportunity, which I think is really cool. Um, that's a really cool thing to me that they, that they do that. So no, I haven't had any placements as far as I know, but again, a lot of the stuff you don't know if you have a placement until way later down the road. So... Yeah, Crucial Music, you need to check that out. They now offer the ability to upload covers. So if you have some unique covers of pop songs or rock songs or any song, um, and this is different than public domain covers, I because I have a lot of those, and I send, uh, I've had some of those actually accepted by them. But this is for public, this is not for public domain songs, but for cover songs, maybe uh, something that has been uh, made recently or in the past three, four, five decades, uh, I would say they're likely looking for well-known songs by well-known artists, but reimagined in a different way. Now, I would say you would have to be prepared to make sure that you know that uh, you're not going to get writer, writer's royalties for this, but they will split um, the sync fees with you on this. And even they won't be able to get the publishing. So they are looking for possibilities of getting larger sync fees that they will then split with their authors. So, um, um, so yeah, crucialmusic.com. Go visit them and see the way. If you haven't signed up with them, you need to. But I thought the big news this week was that they are now accepting cover songs. And, um, and also, while we're speaking of cover songs, I wanted to let you know that also um, the sheet music company I work with called Arrange Me, uh, and I'll I'll put all the links to these things down below once I get done with this broadcast, but arrangeme.com, which is owned by Hal Leonard and where I do my sheet music, they also allow you to do sheet music arrangements of uh, of popular and cover songs. But um, you obviously will have to have them in sheet music form. And also you don't make a lot of money off of them because you can't just, you can charge whatever you want, but you can't make the uh, all the money from it. Um, as a matter of fact, they might even set the price for these, but you will only make a dollar or two as you are not going to be able to to, to make because they're paying who owns the song. They're paying the publishers or the artists or who make the song. And so you're only getting what they offer you, uh, which is just a little bit. But since it's a cover song, you have the opportunity to make more through them. So you can also upload cover songs, uh, sheet music to arrange me and have it out on Sheet Music Plus and 
sheet music digital or whatever the the different sheet music companies that they work with are the biggest ones so yeah that's something you can do and another way if you do any cover songs or want to do cover songs a way that you can do that and sheet music is something that uh, i had on my list to talk about mainly because uh, i'm getting more and more into that i've seen more uh, some seen i've seen income from that and uh so I, I definitely wanted to talk about sheet music today but that's certainly a way that you can um, get more music income in a way that's different than stock music or sync licensing it's different than licensing music it's a little bit more on the publishing side and we're going to speak about the publishing side in just a minute but first let me remind you if you are interested in stock music and putting stuff into stock music and you have not uh, yet done that because you need a resource. I get asked this question all the time. Where do I get a resource that will let me know what all the stock music libraries are to, to go to? There's a bunch of these resources for sync licensing, but there's not many for, uh, for stock music. Uh, and so, uh, or not one that I could find at all other than websites that kind of threw a bunch of ads at you. So I made this book called The Stock Market it's how and why and where to distribute your music to stock music libraries. It lists all the stock music libraries and uh, exactly the page to go to to become an author. So you may want to look at that and uh, get that ebook because uh, that's why I made it, just so that you could have a, a quick reference. And it's PDF format. And uh, one of the reasons why I made it PDF format and not a course is because I think it's more helpful to have that as a PDF to click on the, the links and go right to those libraries. So make sure that you, if you haven't checked that out yet, you go to makemusicincome.com slash stock market, check out that ebook and see what you think, if that would be something you'd be interested in help your uh, career of uh, making passive music income through stock. It's, it's a wild game. We're gonna talk about some of the stock libraries today as usual um in, in in my experiments with them and different things that have happened to me with them um yeah we're going to talk about stock but go see the stock market if you are at all interested in stock music let's see what's happening in the chat here um uh, mix club is in the house good to see you Rhett. thanks for coming here internet trouble listening in the background that sounds great glad you're here um saw your video the other night and meant to uh uh uh, talk about it, but we'll 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 talk about that later. Hey, Rhett, I hope you're having a good day. All right, well, let's move on with the news. And now, on with the news. Um, I've had some updates to my experiments, as you might remember. I did some experiments with Pond Five and Audio Jungle, and said I was doing some different things this month, especially on those two. Uh, Pond Five letting Pond Five set my price. Um, that has not been too surprising. They set it all to five dollars, uh, pretty much. Uh, I went through and changed some of my Halloween music to twenty dollars. I'm glad I did because I've already had a sale um, uh, that was uh, of twenty dollars, and then I've had uh, a sale that was at the price they set, which is five dollars. So, uh, as we've talked about five dollar sales at stock uh, music. You might think, oh, why is $5 even worth it? Well, there's two reasons why it's worth it. Number one, um, we're on lots of different um, libraries. We're on sync music libraries. We're on stock music libraries. We're on non-exclusive libraries like Crucial. We're on other things. But that, let's say I make $175 out of that deal or $2 or whatever I make, two to something. Um, that's still probably, uh, I don't know, 10 to uh, five to 10 times as much as I make on motion array download and motion array. Uh, we all, uh, or at least I still make the most monthly from motion array, but um, I have to look at it on a per song basis. Plus I have to look at it on a content ID basis. What I need to, as many songs go into content ID as I can. So I'd rather have 10 sales at a dollar 75 than one sale at um you know, 12 bucks because I want more songs out there possibly in content ID that are going to make me income. So that's the way I think about it. And that's the way I continue to think about this experiment with Pond5. Uh, so far, it's it's rather unimpressive. I haven't had a ton of downloads on there with this experiment, but uh, 
they haven't changed it. I don't know if they change them based on time or or whatever or sales or whatever. But so far, I haven't seen letting them set my price is any different than me setting it at five dollars um, for all that. Now, I will say that Audio Jungle has been a bit of diff a different animal this this month in setting everything at twenty dollars. Um, I think you sell more with this. Um, and let me write that down. I just saw a comment about yummy sounds and I want to talk about that here on the news as well, because I actually talked to him about your thoughts on this. Um, but audio jungle, I'm setting everything at $20 and already I've made $20 this month on several, uh, downloads. It seems like that's a better price than trying to go low ball on audio jungle. Um, who knows if audio jungle how how big a deal that is i know last month i had a broadcast license that sold for about 80 bucks and so that was um that was a nice thing i will probably go through and adjust all my broadcast licenses as well with the experiment with pawn five but uh so far that's what i've seen on my experiment uh we're nine days in so i don't have full data to share with you I, I don't think it's going to be much different, except I am glad that I pushed audio jungle prices up. And so, um, so while we're talking about stock music, because this is really the last uh, stock music type of thing I want to talk about today, uh, other than um, some content ID stuff, and maybe we'll talk about that next. I do want to address the yummy, the yummy bear, the yummy elephant room. Um, I did talk to Paul at Yummy Sounds, and I see that Iona is left a comment here that says it's very disappointed with Yummy Sounds. Sent a unique demo link with tracking after seeing my video. I did a video about Yummy Sounds, and without listing, the owner sent back a rejection with an attached one hundred and fifty dollar course uh, that he was offering. Very unprofessional. Okay, so I get your. I get it. I get how um, how that feels, and and you can tell he didn't even listen because uh, you you had a unique demo link that we're tracking, so you can tell. And so, yeah, I, I I think they are full up as what as far as they can go. I think they are at a place where they're not taking many artists now. I I don't I didn't make a video about Yummy Sounds because. Um, I knew that they were open to artists. I made a video about Yummy Sounds because as always on this channel, I talk about my experiences with these companies and what happens to me. Uh, that's all I can talk about on here. I can't I can't give you, um, uh, just like when Steve talks about how much he makes from Motion Array, he can only say what's happening. He can't say why necessarily or or, or even for sure how that he's making all that income from Motion Array. But as you see, uh, make sure you watch our video on Monday because we are going to rip off the lid about Motion Array and talk about different people making different money on there and, and what we think the answers are for that. Whether you are making $50 or under or you're making uh, 500 or more, and there's not many of you, according to my poll, uh, you'll want to watch that. And yes, he did he felt now just remember this is you're talking about a company but remember most of these companies are are uh, in this case it's it's basically one person and this person said yeah star wars mug alert ah, warm beverage i recommend you get one because this we've got a lot more news to go through but um he wanted to offer something to people and and so in his eyes, just like when I showed you a minute ago, um, I showed you my stock market book. This stock market book is not free. It's it's not expensive either. It's only nine ninety nine. But um, I do this as as a way to offer you information that I made. I, I I did some work to make this thing. Now, obviously, I'm not selling for one hundred fifty dollars, and I'm not offering a you know. Uh, I'm not offering you uh, uh, or trying to get you to buy this thing instead of uh, giving you this free content. I give free content on my channel every week, and I'm happy to do that. I have a lot of fun doing it. I love doing these lives especially. But I get that there is some um, some acrimony, some, some, uh, 
maybe even discuss that you would uh, send something to a library and instead of even listening or saying no thanks, they would send you a letter back with a course for you to buy. But I, I think you have to look at that as they're not necessarily um, trying to sell you something instead of take your music. They're just trying to offer you something they think you, might help you. You can believe that or not believe you, but from what I what I say, what I know is what he wrote me. As a matter of fact, I can probably find the email that he wrote me and what he said in that email about um, about his heart about that. And I, I think really we do have to look at this as you know these people are trying to, their best to help everybody. The problem is that and Steve and I talk about this in our our next video that's coming out on Monday on Steve's channel. But it is very difficult to help everyone with so many people applying. And um, I kind of wanted to see if I could just find what he said here, because I think uh, this might be something that you want to know. Oh, he goes, I, I noticed many applications came your way. Some implied that. There were quite a few with really cool tracks and maybe also a few that we took in, but we have to draw the line somewhere, at least for the moment. To be able to offer them something, I led some of them to a course that I created to maximize music licensing income in general. It consists of well-sorted lessons covering all topics of business and sharing insights on growing the business with actionable guides and names of services and licensing companies. The feedback I received is, was very good, even though it is already complex and well explained. There seems to be continuous questions about various topics. Seeing this encouraged my idea for building a community platform even further. And he goes on to talk about something, he a community that he is building that uh, I may or may not be part of. Uh, I'll let you know more when I when I discuss when I talk about that. But um, I think you have to not not immediately jump off the cliff that someone is trying to get something over on you and trying to sell you on something and not take your music. It's uh, basically what you are feeling is the fact that someone did not even give you the time of day. But I think the, the more realistic thing that's happening here is that people, they have just said, listen, I, I can't take everyone. And, and when you get deluged with um, submissions, you have to sometimes say, I'm not able to take this call right now. Uh, and you, and yes, you do have a rejection letter. I have a, a letter that I send out to songwriters when they ask me if I will listen to their songs for free and give them crit, uh, feedback. Well, I have a service that does that. So I, I, I can't just do that for free because I don't have the time. And, um, and, this particular company might have just gotten to a point where they have too many um, submissions. And so the best that they can do is say, listen, I don't, don't have that. If you're interested, here's a course that you could take that might be helpful to you if you like these kind of things. But uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that uh, it was super unprofessional. $150 isn't very, uh, it, it isn't very, uh, is 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 it's pretty high, as you can tell. I I, I sell one ebook and I it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents. So uh, I understand the uh, the sell uh, in a way, but I, I I get that you are upset that you got advertised a course rather than your music got listened to, but um, you could have received nothing ever. So uh, I think sometimes in some cases a rejection letter is better than uh, than, than nothing. Um, but, uh, I don't really have any other things to say about this. And so that's the news. Good night. No, that's uh, all I'm going to say about yummy sounds. Other than the fact that, uh, it's, it's been a good conversation with me, with him, uh, just like, um, you know, Stevie B is with art list. How many of us have also, uh, tried to get on art list and been rejected very quickly? Um, a lot of us, and we're not going to get on there. It's going to hurt our feelings that, that they didn't like our music. Sometimes we even know that they didn't listen. They just sent it back a rejection form. It's just part of this world, folks. It's part of the way it, it, it's going to go. Um, don't, don't feel like that 
um, your failure and don't feel like that. Oh, I can't believe he wants me to buy this course. He's not going to take my songs. Well, that's every company ever, really. Um, you bought this, buy this, um, that kind of thing. But um, I, I think his heart was that he was trying to help. And from the email, the personal email that I got that he sent me, this was not a, a, a form letter that he wrote me. He wrote me back and said, yes, many people have um, have said this and have, have applied, but all I can do is maybe, uh, yeah, give them the best uh, that I can do. And, and the best I can do is offer them a course that I made in case they need the help. And Arco says, sometimes we need to put ourselves in the shoes of the library owners. Yeah. I think too often we think of ourselves as just like, why doesn't everybody want our music when library owners um, have personal issues? I was uh, talking, I want to move into sync here for just a second and talk about some of the things that are going on in sync and, and kind of what I see in the world of sync licensing. And one of the things that I've been dealing with is I just turned in an album to um, uh, at my BMG library. And um, this is this is similar to the thing with 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 yummy sounds. Um, I sent except on a more on a kind of a sync level. I sent something to my sync library and we they sent us out contracts and I we all filled them out and we've all been dealing with that. And this is a country album. I think it will be something that people search for and find and be used in, in things. So I'm excited for it to be out. So I emailed uh, my library owner and I asked him what he thought, or where we were going to go next, what, what album he usually has ideas for what he would like to have next. I asked, and I wanted to also find out if they got all the contracts because there were several partners in these, these songs and to make sh and just to check in and kind of have a catch up call. Didn't hear back. And then I sent him a text, didn't hear back again. And so I thought, okay, what's going on? Uh, I know he's busy, so I don't want to bug him too much. And then uh, I think it was yesterday or today, I sent another email said, Hey man, I'm just really trying to catch up with you. What's going on? I got back, I got an email this morning saying that his baby, his young child, was in the ICU, in the hospital. Folks, these people have real lives. These people have things that they have to deal with that are just like we do. Um, and and some kind, sometimes there can be an emergency. Maybe uh, he got deluged after my video. Not that I think my video got that many, <laughs> that many uh, uh, views, but apparently it did because a lot of people uh, sent him things and sent him and told him, I told you to go there. So, uh, these people are just trying to run their companies the best they can. Guess who runs my companies and my YouTube channel? Um, let me count all my employees one. So, you know, there's a lot to do when you are trying to run your own company. And sometimes, yeah, you do have to put yourself in the shoes of these people and realize that they have lives. And sometimes those lives are more important than your little music piece or than, than the music, even though it is the way they make an income. When I had COVID, all you saw from me was, uh, you know, a few videos that, of, uh, that I had re kind of hadn't put out yet of Jesse, uh, because I couldn't, I didn't have time to do lives and stuff like that. Cause I didn't feel great. And for a week I was basically out of commission. Well, that, that was how I had to handle that. I, I'm a, just a person. I can't just do, um, you know, uh, do whatever needs to be done just because everybody wants it. And same with library owners, same with I've, I've been, I'm a producer for people. I work for people. I work for students. Uh, and, and if I can't help them because there's something personal going on in my life or I'm just overwhelmed, then that's, that's things that can happen. And I know that's not a great answer for some of you when you get rejection letters, but uh, every company, every library owner is doing their best they can. They're not out to screw you uh, with a $150 course. Don't buy the course. If you don't like the course, don't buy it. You don't have to. And um, so, yeah, we just have to realize that these people are human. These people are trying their best. These people are doing, uh, they're trying to give, find ways to make some people money. They can't make every single person money. And uh, you might say, yeah, but they don't have to take my money. Well, you don't have to uh, 
to, to, to give them any money. You don't have to take the course. Don't want the course? Delete the email and say, okay, fine. That one didn't work out. On to the next library. Arco says, I also got a library who had some personal issues. Didn't He can't catch up with his life because he was running the library. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Uh, it's tough to do a lot of stuff, and you've really got to put the time in in your personal relationships and your family, as well as doing live videos, trying to help people with uh, information that they want to get to make passive income. I also want to say, speaking of passive income, this video is not being monetized during the live part, so you shouldn't see any commercials today unless YouTube is putting them in because um, uh, I, I did not put uh, ads on this video. Now, I will put ads on after it's done, but for the live part, you should not run into um, into any 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 commercials unless YouTube just decides to put them in, which they can. Uh, Mix Club says, back up and running internet. Great. Good. Glad you're back up, Brett. Glad you're here. Um, Laura says, I mean, sorry, Linda says, there is no guarantee that even if you buy into a course, your music will be accepted into a library. Of course not. And and I don't think the course was a $150 fee to get into the library. The course was uh, to something that you might use to help you if you think it's helpful to you. It's like my ebook. If you think it's helpful for you, then you should get it. If you don't, then don't get it. Um, you know, all of this information I'm giving you, you can you can take or you can leave. Uh, it's up to you. So I, I think that's the way really all libraries are going to work. And so if if uh, this is a tough business, music business is tough. You can go to music publishers. You can go to um, A and R guys and show them your stuff, and and you can leave without a deal. I've I've done it a thousand times. It seems like it's one reason why I end up starting my own companies is because I got rejected and and said, okay, fine, I will do this myself. And so uh, Arco says he read Ubiquitous, which is the name, uh, the ubiqu Ubiquitous corporate music paper that I wrote in, uh, in to finish my master's last year. It's also up at, oh, that thank you, Arco. That is a great uh, kind of segue to um, this. You can get that paper and also several courses that I have, including my Pond5 course that is and these are not $150. They are, wait for it, free. They're free. It says right there, free. Makemusicincome.com slash free. Got free stuff for you there if you want to uh, learn more about uh, 50 ways to make music income. I'm, I'm really happy with that book. I think there's a lot of ideas in there. And then uh, the Pond5 course, which leads you through uploading Pond5 if you've never done it before or if you've never uploaded to a library before, it might be helpful to you. And then, of course, the ubiquitous paper that uh, Arco was talking about, which is a research paper I did on corporate music. So kind of different. You may have not seen something like that before. So if you want to check that out, that is also at makemusicincome.com slash free. So thank you, Arco, for reminding me about that paper. You can get that there. Um, Wolfgang, uh, responding to Linda says you could accuse Paul from yummy sounds of exactly that people buy the course in hope of being accepted. I, I don't, that did not seem like it was the, the impetus there. It seemed like that, um, just like I offer my services when I am online or on, uh, in an email, you can always go to my site and, and probably find an ebook to buy if you want to. But um, my response to you is just to say, I can't help you right now. Or um, I can't help you right now, but uh, if you want to buy this service, that then you can. I, I just, I've been operating like that for a long time as a producer. And um, you can't help everyone. You can't take every song. Um, now, that all being said, you could probably listen to the songs if they're sent and not send back an email rejecting songs that haven't been heard. Uh, as far as we know, I don't know how the service works as far as uh, being heard and, 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 and your tracking and all that kind of stuff. But um, he might have just gotten deluged and just had to send a, a letter out to everyone saying, listen, I can't help you, but... Uh, if you if you do need some help, I do have a course that might help you with questions. Um, but 
up to you guys. Certainly up to you. And again, remember, yummy sounds is not the end all be all of your music career. It's not, uh, it is not crucial music. It is not a BMG exclusive library, but even those could do nothing for you. You could get a deal with Sony, Warner Brothers, BMG, all of these, and that do nothing for you. A lot of things could happen um, to you in this business. So try to not be discouraged as much as possible. Okay, on with the news. I next want to talk about uh, our favorite uh Baby to Paul. Send my prayer to force baby to Paul. Uh, I don't know. Paul is not who I was talking about, uh, Arco. Um, I don't know what's going on. Uh, Paul, I think, is just trying to, at, 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 uh, at Yummy Sounds, I think he's just trying to kind of keep uh, building his business. I don't know what's going on there. Um, I, I and, and Let me just also just make this one last thing I have to say. I am not connected to Yummy Sounds in any way. I don't, um, I, I just had made a couple bucks from them and, and decided to talk about them two months. I got payments since then I haven't gotten any payments. So I don't know what's up with that. And I, I am not a representative of yummy sounds and have nothing to do with yummy sounds, not connected to them in any way. All right. But I do now want to talk about taxi music and my continuing experiment there. I am nearing the end of year two. I will be looking to um to re-up or not re-up with taxi here in the next two or three months um that said yesterday i got two emails right in a row one email was a um a congratulations on being uh, on a forward uh, at taxi which was my fourth forward in a row and my sixth out of the last 10 uh submissions have been forwarded now uh, Steve is going to talk about an experience that he's had with a taxi um, contact, someone contacting him from taxi. You can see that on Monday on Steve's channel. So you're going to want to go watch that But um, in our podcast. But I will say also that uh, this, particular, uh, this particular experiment with taxi still uh, might come to an end should I get to the end and have to evaluate the money that I've spent and uh, let you, I'll let you, of course, I'll be doing a video on it and I will let you know what happened uh, to me during my course of working with taxi. Um, the, the final tally, if I decide to leave of how, of how many um, songs I submitted and how many uh, forwards I have, I've tried uh, to really work hard this year on my taxi uh, and doing things um, for taxi uh, rather than just for me doing things uh, for the briefs and really writing for the briefs and or paying strict attention to the briefs to make sure I, I approach it correctly. And um, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm called, talking about taximusic.com. You can check them out um, online. Uh, I, again, hey, Stevie B is in the house. Come on in, Stevie B. We've been talking about your ears must be burning. But um I'm talking about taxi and, you know, I'm coming to the end of that. And, uh, I did just get an, another, uh, forward last night. So, uh, we'll see how things go. And, you know, uh, that's just going to be what it is. If I think that it's worth it, I will re, re up. If I don't, I'll have to look at all the data and I will make a video about it either way, talking about why or why not I am, I'm going to be continuing with taxi. Um, you know, I don't know if there's any taxi people in here. I know Steve, like I just said, Steve had a, an experience with taxi that we'll talk, he'll talk about in Monday's podcast, but, um, so far I have not seen any leads come back from that. And to be honest, that's where the money is focused on. The money is not focused on for me getting feedback from a guy in at taxi. It's not focused for me on the community at Taxi. I, we have a great community in our Discord, which you can find in the information below, which if you're watching, you should definitely get into our Discord. But uh, I, I, am, I, I, I think that community plus my online community through my channel uh, and, uh, is enough community. And uh, I find that a lot of people at Taxi are Taxi uh, lovers, which is fine. 
but uh, I, I'm just, that's not a place where I need to hang out. Uh, I'm looking just like I, when I send stuff to a library and want to hear back if they're interested in the stuff, that's the connections I'm after here. And if uh, I can, I can send emails for free with uh, my, with my links on them to libraries. I do not need a company to do that for me. So um, especially if there's not going to, if there's going to be a lot of money involved on the front end from me to the company, um, and there's going to be zero connections. It, um, so I, I'm just, that data will be compiled and shown later on, but that's where we are right now. Um, I think you can probably tell by my tone where I'm leading, but uh, we'll see what happens when we get there. Um, I think Taxi is a good service and I think it's they offer great information to a lot of people. Um, but for me personally, it has to lead to a contact. And if it doesn't lead to a contact, then uh, I'll just I'll, I'll just quit paying money to go to the contacts and 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 just approach the contacts on my own um, with for zero dollars. So that's where we are with taxi music right now. Um, all right. So if you are a little late to and we're here at the very beginning, I just want to mention again that I'm excited to say that um, Hello Composers is coming back. It's back again. We'll be starting up on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Not on this channel, I, although I will put a link here on the channel so that it'll kind of push you over to that. But I'll be putting that. Make sure you go to hellocomposers.com and that you register, or I should say uh, subscribe to the site so that you'll get the reminders and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we're going to be doing that whole, uh, we're going to be, doing a whole thing that day, uh, talking about, uh, composing and, and how, what the kind of, what the kind of outlook for the channel is and all that kind of stuff. It'll be Tuesdays at 11 AM live right here. Uh, well not right here, but on hello composers YouTube site. I hope you will join and be part of that. So, all right. Uh, let's get back to the news here. Anything that we need to talk about, um, just to add to taxi, Jonathan Carlisle says, 100% agree about taxi. I was a member for five years, went to four road rallies. Wow. And I made one library contact, no longer a member. Well, that's, uh, that's certainly something that I've heard before. Now, in all fairness, Steve, since he has joined us, had two contacts back from from taxi uh sends whether they turn out to be something uh it, it i'm not sure that they are necessarily uh something he was interested in and we'll he'll just have to wait and see uh, as you'll find out on monday uh, about one but wolfgang says eric can you tell us how many tracks slash albums you publish to exclusive sync libraries per year um my goal is around a hundred um, I've got about 125 in libraries now. I pulled about a dozen out recently because I, I wanted to do some other things with those songs and, and my library owner was kind enough to let me uh, pull those out. And But I, 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 was, I was really hoping to get up to 200 this year. It doesn't look like being September 9th, that's gonna happen. Um, but uh, my goal is to uh, double that number, get up to 250. Uh, actually, you know, my goal is to get up to a thousand. Um, there is something called the production music Academy, and I think I'm going to put it the link right in here because it is super interesting. Uh, something they have on their site that everybody needs to read production music Academy. No, no, not, not the production music Academy Pro production. That is Stevie B's production music Academy, and you need to go to production music academy.com. But uh, this is the Production Music Association. And I was looking at this because they just recently had a, uh, a seminar there. But on one of their pages, I think it was on their resource pages or their help pages or something, they had a fact. Is this, is this it? It was really good. And I'd love to put, um, I don't know if this is the right thing. Um, I will try to put that in the links below. Um, but they really had a great um a great question and answer thing this is not the one i was looking for 
but a really great fact on, um, oh, here it is, it's PMA music, the Production Music Association, yeah. And they have on there a frequently asked questions that you need to read. If you are interested at all in sync music, um, you definitely need to read this. Um, it's a uh, pmamusic.com. So you can just go to that site and go to the resources and frequently ask questions. I will also put it in the chat here of this live stream for you to go see. Really um, a good uh, a site to see and uh, a good read for anyone interested in sync licensing. I just found it really good. You could read it a hundred times. It's really good. Uh, yeah, dude, Stevie B, you will always get plugs from me, man. He is the guy who uh, will teach you really well on how to create uh, music, especially the music that he's creating and uh, so many great tricks and tips there and has a great academy. hundred strong, or as I said, I thought it said a thousand strong when I saw an, an email from him, but it was only a hundred, but still hundred uh, members. That's quite an accomplishment. Congratulations to Steve for uh, for having a hundred people in his production music academy. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Carlaw says he quit taxi because one library contact was too much for him. So I think he's being a little tongue in cheek there uh, anyway. All right, well, let's move on to more news. Um, I want to talk about uh, a, a video coming up on um, Make Music Income. On Monday, I will be premiering uh, a video interview I did with um, Trevor Matheson of Word and Curb Licensing. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Curb and Word Entertainment. But he has been in publishing there for a, a very long time and has been very helpful to me as a publisher for years over there. 111 members on Stevie B's Production Mem Music Academy. You guys need to look at that. Um, but yeah, uh, Trevor, this video with Trevor is going to be really good on Monday. You really need to take a look at that. Um, I'll have a link uh, in the description below, or you can just check out our videos and it'll be the newest video starting Monday. And I'm really excited for you to understand that this is going to be the definitive music publishing video on this channel. And we, we start with copyright. We talk about what music publishers do, real mu music publishers, not people just a guy like me in his house with a music publishing company, but real music publishing companies on Music Row in Nashville or in Los Angeles, what they do and how they think. You're going to learn a little bit about how music publishers think about all of this stuff. Um, we talk about PROs and we talk about CSAC and we talk about how to get invited into that. And we talk about um, we, we talk about content ID, which is a very big deal to them. We talk about a lot of things. We, we, we talk about a lot of things. I, ISRC codes, I think we get into. We get into everything related to publishing, music publishing. You want to watch that video. That is uh, not necessarily news but it's a little bit more of an advertisement for Monday on this channel. But I'm telling you, uh, I'll, I'll actually just go and do this and, and put the link up here so that if you're watching this part of the video, you can go up there and see that once I am able to edit this video. Um, I also have a stock market video um, coming up that to kind of talk about the stock market as I see it these days, and as uh, and also to really explain my book a little bit, my ebook, because people keep asking me if I have a, a resource on stock music, and I'm like, hello. I, apparently, I did not announce my stock music <laughs> book very well. I think I kind of just mentioned it and started offering it, and I should have done like a full, you know, email or or video about it. So. I'm going to uh, have a stock market stock market video coming up next week as well, and then um, the, one of the last things I want to talk about is content ID. We got our content ID information for June and um, and and how much we made on that. I had another pretty decent month. It was seven uh, seventy seventy ish dollars. Um, again, mainly for one song that's getting a lot of a lot of plays strangely another video that had more views made uh, just a few bucks and so still unknown how content id is calculated and all that kind of stuff and 
Um, to be honest with you, a content ID, it kind of works similarly to, um, to BMI and PROs where we still, we don't know how they figure up stuff either. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a hazy mystery as one of my engineers used to say, uh, about how content ID is configured, how, um, all these things are work. Uh, we are at the mercy of these libraries and these, these reporting companies and these, uh, different things to pay us uh, when they are able to pay us. And that's that, my friends, is the music business in a nutshell. Uh, it, it, you just never know uh, how or when you're going to be paid. And, and actually, probably the funny part about stock music libraries is that they are probably the most upfront with what you're going to get and what you make and when you get paid. And so uh, to me, that's one of the funniest parts. And one of the things I like most about non-exclusive, but especially stock music sites is that you get paid when you have a payout and that, and you know, when that payout's going to come, that's probably the best deal in the music business. And that's probably one reason why people still want to figure out ways to make music income with stock music libraries. So, um, Arco says, why do I always confuse stock market with buying and selling of stock? Well, that was on purpose. I, 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 I was tongue in cheek by talking about the stock market and uh, I wanted it to have a, a double name. My next ebook about sync licensing is going to have a similar kind of uh, double entendre name. So uh, I'm working on a new ebook about sync licensing, not necessarily a lot, how to, how to, uh, uh, where to go, who to contact, but my experience in getting into sync libraries and how I got into them. Uh, Arkel says, I had a question. I did this question on Discord and Steve answered this, but I'm not sure if he even read my reply. Steve, come on, Steve, read people's replies. Don't be so stingy. Uh, what is the question? Um, I don't know what the question is. I don't see a question here. Um, anyway, um, ask your question, Arco, and I will answer it, even if Steve so blatantly ignored your your email there or your your question on our discord and by the way for the 25 six people in here if you're not on our discord you need to go get in our discord you'll find it in the description below of this video we have a lot of folks in there we're headed to 600 if we're not over 600 folks in there and if you want to get answers about any questions you want people to listen to your music you want to get thoughts about your music we have feedback section that's great in there very busy feedback section um all right, so Arco's question is, identify had this question on begin approval. Do you license your music on royalty-free music sites? The question is from identify, what do I put there? I think Steve actually did answer this, if I'm if I'm remembering right, uh, Mr. Arco. So I think you might uh, might be wrong about that because someone did, um, did answer this question. And if you haven't checked out our Discord, make sure to go to our Discord site and be part of it and uh, be, there's just, it's a free place to come and get stuff answered. Let's go to the content ID section right now on there. And yes, uh, Steve did, see, we, we, get, we, we talked badly about Steve, but he actually did answer your question. Um, he said, uh, identify, I have this question, should begin approval sections. Do you license your music on royalty-free music sites? question is from identify what do i put here well i think you put and steve said this too just say yes you do license your stuff on royalty free sites and uh, i think that is what you should say and you said if it says yes it asks for a link after that i cannot provide if i am not uploading now um are you saying you are not uploading to to that now that's what i don't understand um yeah you could say no but i i it, I don't understand why you're uh, worried about it if you're not uploading anything to them. Um, I, I would just wait until you're uploading to them and answer yes. Uh, if not, like Steve says here, just say no and wait till you start uploading. I think that's the simple answer there. Um, identify is, you know, is it going to be the savior of stock music and, and we're going to make a lot? It, it, probably not. Uh, it might make us something. Listen, folks, music income is all about getting as many music incomes coming in and many streams, so to speak, as we can get coming in. That's why on this channel, I do talk about 
uh, stock music. I talk about sync licensing. I talk about sending your distributing your music out to Spotify. I talk about music publishing. I talk about music production. All of these things that can bring you music income back. And, con and content ID is just a, a, a new way that hopefully we can see some back end from some of the stock music that's out on videos. And when people don't monetize them, we can monetize them. Or if they happen to steal your music from someplace like that, you can, um, you know, you, 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 you can hopefully get some back end money from that. But yeah, like Steve says here, say yes and provide them to your Pond5 uh, library or your Motion Array library or whatever. Um, I don't think it's a question you need to worry too much about. It's uh, it's not something you likely couldn't change if you need to go back and change it. So, but content ID is something that uh, is going to be my second biggest income, uh, without a doubt, next to um, my motion array income. Which uh, it's possible that content ID could compete for how much I make on motion array. Uh, but anyway, um, that's we'll we'll just have to wait and see what what happens towards the end of the year. I, I at this point. It, it really certainly seems like I'm going to make a, a, at least a couple thousand less than I made um, on on last year uh, with stock music. That's why one reason I have stopped putting as much uh, stock music uh, out there. I have stopped creating as much. And as you look at our video on for on Monday, when you watch Steve and I's podcast on Monday, You'll see that we are, um, we are, especially Steve, he is focused on um, a lot less music than before, where we were trying to put a lot of these libraries. Steve focuses very carefully on producing one great song and putting it in there. And so make sure you watch that video as he talks about that process. And that'll be on Monday uh, when we drop that, when we drop that nugget, those nuggets on you on the, uh that didn't sound so good but when we drop that on there all right glad you got an answer to that question uh well we are about at the end of the news that i have for you today uh, hello composers returning on tuesday crucial music changing and now accepting um covers and really have kind of redesigned the way that you can uh apply to them either with songs with public domain covers or with regular covers of current music so i really love what they've done there so you need to go look at those things um my experiments on pond 5 and audio jungle are going about as like they did last month so I, i'm not really sure um of what this what what's going to happen there we did talk about yummy sounds which some people are upset that uh after my video about that library that they got a form letter back and that form letter graciously offered them a $150 course. But hey, uh, that's just the way some people work. And again, you might get to a place where a library is just not able to help you. And instead they are wanting to uh, to give you, and, and the only thing they can give you is, an, is a service that they offer. I do this all the time with people who contact me and they say, can you uh, listen to my music for free and tell me all you know about it and tell me if you want it and tell me, uh, and things I can't help them with. I'm like, listen, all I can do is is tell you what services I provide, and here they are. And some of them are ebooks, or some of them are consulting and things like that. Um, hey, Jonathan, thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. Thanks for everybody for being here. Um, yeah, uh, there's lots of stuff in this video. In about 24 hours to 48 hours, I'll be able to go in and put all the bookmarks and edit this thing down and uh, let you be able to just zoom around to all the, the things we talked about in this video. Thanks to everybody who's been here. Arco, thanks for being here. Stevie B, as always. Yeah, I do. I need a dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Uh, I actually made that for something recently. Um, Arco says, what's the genre of this first Hello Composers video? Um, it's about starting and restarting. And and because I'm kind of starting a new version of it and restarting it and uh and kind of where we start with composing where do we start with uh where do we put our hands down this hello composers is not a site for super advanced composers because i think the thing i see the most that people struggle with who are coming into making media or making music for libraries is they need 
They need some general uh, help uh, in just cr creating from scratch. And so I want to talk a lot about creating in certain keys, creating chords, what chords you can choose uh, and, and when you're creating songs, and, um, uh, song structure and things like that. I, I, not necessarily production stuff. Stevie B will handle the production side in the Production Music Academy and on his videos. But on my Hello Composer videos, I want to talk about stuff I don't get a chance to talk about here on this channel. I want to talk about composing and uh, chord choices and music theory things that you might want to know. So that's what the Hello Composers channel, I can only put about a, a, an hour into it a week right now with my schedule. So that'll be a live video on Tuesdays at 11. So make sure you join us there and make sure once again, if you're just joined us lately, that you do go down to hellocomposers.com and make sure you subscribe there because I could use all the subscribers I can get there as well as making sure you're ready to see that first video on Tuesday. I'm, I'm writing the script now. It's going to be a fun day and uh, it's going to be live just like this. So you'll be able to ask questions. We'll be able to talk music. We'll be able to talk music things. There will not be questions and answers about money making. This will be questions and answers about composing. So I know you have thoughts about what I'm going to say and, and thoughts about what you might want to talk about with composing. Would love to know your thoughts on all that and just find out where everybody is, what they think. Am I talking about stuff that's too basic? Am I talking about not basic enough? Um, and so we're going to get into some music theory things that go along with composing and really get, we're going to get musical. We're going to get musical in this and up in here as we say in dope videos like this. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off and move on with my day and do a, a few other things of work. I hope you have uh, enjoyed being here with us today. Make sure uh, that you go get the stock market, you get our free stuff. And I just thank you so much for being part of my live stream today and being part of this channel. And look forward to seeing everybody on next Friday, or actually on Tuesday on hellocomposers.com. Make sure you go register for that. So going to say goodbye now. Everybody, thanks so much, Sherry. Thank you for being here. Arco, Jonathan, Stevie B, thanks for being here. Going to end the stream. Everybody say your last goodbyes because the stream is ending. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye. Have a good day. Bye, Stevie B. Bye, Linda. Bye, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye. 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 See you later. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.